So Ubisoft recently released what they consider a flagship game, Watch Dogs Legion, the 10th or who knows by now, dude, like the 11th or so in a row in the franchise of what I would consider if I had to classify their the last 10 or so games that they've put out. I would consider this genre specifically crappy, mind-numbing, open-world games. And so far, it's received like mostly mixed reviews from players and critics. But you wouldn't know that at all if you were on the Epic Game Store and bought it off there because they can't seem to afford a review page with all the Fortnite money they make for some reason. And with IGN review interns seemingly thinking it's another banger from Ploopysoft claiming... Since you can switch between any Joe Schmo you see on the street, it's automatically an 8 out of 10, just like the past three. But failing to see how hollow and shallow and repetitive the gameplay is as a whole, and honestly, from the company as a whole. And as, as a side note, actually, it doesn't seem to be stopping as AC Valhalla just released a few days back, and it's got a, like a stupid number of bugs. It's just another, like, crappy reskin, man. Like, these guys really need to make some new assets for these. <laughs> Come on, man. 60 bucks for this. And microtransactions. Jeez, boys. They really out here trying to screw us over. No, but really, I, before I get too far into this, I really wanted to talk about how they got here. Because, let's be honest, there was a point in time where Ubisoft used to make good games just like Bioware and Bethesda used to make good games but also I, I used to buy them so yeah so for those of you who don't understand Ubisoft essentially has sort of turned into a meme right in the sense that they're very limited approach to making a game over the past decade is to put generic fetch quests and towers for seeing the damn map like every five blocks. And it's actually getting quite apparent that they can't make anything else. If you seriously took a hard look at the Watch Dogs franchise, the, both Divisions and Tom Clancy, all the Tom Clancy games, which honestly I feel like he's rolling in his grave by now, watching his name be attached to these abominations and all the Far Cry games, all four Far Cry games, and the new Assassin's Creed games, the open world ones, you really have to stretch your sense of disbelief that they aren't like actually the same game. They're all essentially the same game, open world, but they just change the perspective and then they, you know, they change the skin of it. So instead of in London, you're in London but in the 18th century London. So in Valhalla, it's the same. <laughs> it's actually the same area too. Wow. Now, for a sec, let's talk about some generally considered good games Uber Eats has put out. And in my opinion, those are Far Cry 3 and Assassin's Deed Black Flag, both of which have things that have actually set them apart that make them enjoyable experiences to play, at least in my opinion. And I think a lot of people would agree with me on those. Um, they have much better reviews on Metacritic. And yeah, you can look that shit up. Far, so starting off, Far Cry 3's story, villain, arguably one of the best villains of all time. Voss, known in the gaming community. I'm pretty sure if you bring up Far Cry, the first thing everyone's going to think about is Voss. And like, oh, it has that scary dude. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's Far Cry 3. And essentially, it's a game centered around being on an island with a rogue drug gang and a psychotic leader trying to kill you and your privileged white friends, whilst also finding out you were part of an old island prophecy that could summon a god wasn't cool enough, that all that wasn't cool enough, you also got to see boobies. What? No. No, but really, this was around the start of when Pubisoft introduced those mechanics like sync towers from AC in a meaningful and fun way with progression options that felt rewarding and fresh and it came with a solid multiplayer offering as well and a co-op like a whole other side story for free by the way what the fuck remember when shit was free and AC Black Flag legit made itself a contender for a pirate GTA in my opinion 
It actually innovated while borrowing from its predecessors. The story was engaging. You could hunt for sharks, whales, play board games, fight ships in epic like sea battles. Like that shit was unheard of. It it was in AC three, but in nowhere near like the level of detail. And for a good sense, I mean AC three wasn't a like a ship sailing game, but you make a game about pirates that's sort of, you know, in the whole sense of what a pirate does, like they sail ships and shit. And you can participate in like huge like ship battles with like legendary ships. I think some of them are actually like real ships too. It's pretty cool. You could take their resources, board their ship and like fight them and like you're pretty much reliving like Pirates of the Caribbean but like making it like doing it yourself it was really cool and it also actually i almost forgot it actually spawned its own like side game that actually hasn't come out yet Sk skulls and bones that's what it was and you can also like dive underwater get eaten by like eels you get like really like improved assassin animations from like ac3 at the time it was really really cool i think it also had multiplayer as well um i don't think it had microtransactions but i could be wrong about that um, and it just all like came together so perfectly, except when you were taken out by the stupid animus bullshit where you go to point A to point B for exposition reasons. But besides that, no one, no one really cared about that. Let's be honest. And you know what? It's actually a solid plan. If you're a poopy soft suit, you're basically copying CODs, rinse and repeat formula, but you can claim you have a diverse set of franchises and so it's not really the same as, you know, re like remaking the same game over and over. Since you can just argue it's a different POV or it has weapons or this one has Shane from The Walking Dead. So please buy our game. It's different. Now, to be completely honest, this could be its own separate video, but I figure this is going to be a long video anyway. So I might as well cover it, at least in like a condensed state. So I'm pretty sure most of us should know that a lot of YouTubers and Twitch streamers get paid to play certain games by the devs and or the publisher just to like, you know, get it out there and stuff. A good example actually is um, the new Marvel game, Marvel Avengers, where like the whole ad budget was spent on like sponsors like Virgin Mobile or whatever, just to like hype them up earlier in the release, get like the... The middle schoolers to buy them because they saw like ninja play it or something or or their favorite like uwu streamer oni chan streamer playing it while like chewing five gum or some shit but like you know which is fair to some degree like i like five gum just as much as the next guy and then i'm also avert oh oh wait hold on i'll edit that out whatever and and seeing these audiences essentially being scammed into like buying a game that isn't what was promised feels like pretty shady and manipulative and you know i understand like these influencers i hate that word um they have bills to pay too so there's that side of it i guess but i think there's like a point where you have to draw the line between you know using your platform to make like loud equals funny jokes for 12 year olds and baiting them into buying like a goober game that is full of like bugs at launch and it's like only fun with friends and it's like bro no shit every fucking game that you play with friends is fun because at least when i'm playing i'm laughing at them being like totally shit at every game while i'm smurfing at, at the game and i'm sorry i'm tired of these those games being super shitty so i'm like every game that my friends play is a shitter game because all these people advertise these shitty games to them and they just buy it and I'm like stuck playing with them because they have like they don't understand the connection of like how it really works it's like no shit bro like that's why they're fun dude like the reality is they're completely void of any true heart and soul and they're more than likely full of these like surprise mechanics as EA would say which we all know is not good for mommy's credit card. Now, 
back in January of this year, Ubisoft actually did an interview with uh, VGC on how they make their games and asked and were asked why they were so similar to one another. And Ubisoft's response was that they were already working on a plan to revamp their editorial team, who they said are responsible for the final say in game direction and, and what mechanics are implemented. But the article also said that they don't actually work on the games themselves. That's right. The people responsible for seeing the overall picture and direction of every game that comes out of Ubisoft, it's controlled by a staff of 100 people who do not know anything about making games. They're not devs at all. They're just a group of publishers and editors who get to have the final say in everything that comes out of their their baby maker machine of crappy games. It's just a hundred people just like honing in and just listening. It's like a, a Facebook safe space of people just like echoing and hearing their own voices. And it's just like, clearly something's amiss, dude. You're making the same game over and over. So something, something's not, not ticking, you know? So, okay, then surely like what they said they were going to revamp it. So something's a, like will change, right? That's the, in theory, that's what's supposed to happen. My opinion was maybe they thought of letting some of the devs have some power over what they create, possibly. Maybe that would be a step in the right direction. But no, that would be the sane choice. And we don't like those around these parts. Instead, the poor sales numbers from Tom Clancy's Breakpoint made Ubisoft expand the team. Whoosh. And keep the same people in charge. And it totally backfired. But like, could we expect anything less when the president of the team himself, I forget his name, it's like some Russian name. And I quote, we needed to make sure there was more time between each iteration of live games in order to generate interest. The truth is, this was supposed to be like a turning point for Gubisoft. They had delayed a game they had worked on for three years, revamped the editorial system, brought more people in. These two games were just supposed to just work, you know? But they don't just work, like Todd says. It's a lie, dude. And you can't play the COVID card when Watch Dogs had already been in three years dev time. And it was practically gold by then. And they have to have been working on it with the old hardware first to make sure the game worked properly on like the Xbox One and PS4. Because that's how games work. I don't know the exact dates for the Valhalla dev time. But it can't have been in a year. Because, you know, this isn't Anthem. Or at least, like, I hope it's not Anthem in terms of dev time. But I know this isn't going to change, like, any minds of people who, like, plan on buying these games already. And just don't care. But I don't really care about them either. I'm I'm here to, to just say it how it is, dude. I'm here for the fence sitters who are like unsure about if they want to keep buying another game. But they are like, uh, it's not that fun. I know it's not that fun. But my friends have it. And it's like, bro, you don't need to buy it just because your friends have it. If it's a bad game, just save your 60 bones for, like, cyberpunk or some shit. At the end of the day, though, like, you're in charge of what games you buy. I'm in charge of what games I buy. And I, I just personally, I, I want those games to be, like, progressively better with every new iteration. I'm sorry that that's, like, too much to ask for. I really don't think it is. When we're paying like full price, like 60 bucks every time, and they're shoving like cosmetic microtransactions down our throats every time in every game. And it's in both games. There's a season pass, and I know there is in, in Legion. There is a season pass in Legion, and there's microtransactions in Valhalla. But I think there's also, I think it's both and both, to be honest with you, and it wouldn't surprise me. But when they do this, like, I think at least, at least bare minimum, they should be trying to make a game that's like better than the last, like, come on, that's like some basic shit. You should be like borrowing from what makes the old game so great 
but also expanding on, you know, lore, story, gameplay, character development, etc. Just like, I don't know, bruh. Just fix your shitty games, Ubisoft. And stop downgrading graphics from your trailers. It's just, like super cringe, dude. It's 2020. Get your shit together. See you, chads. Yeah, I, 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 tropical spray. I saw my way. You wanna run it out? Keep it real, so we let it bang. Give us on no lanes. Got us on my veins.